Newcastle consider loan move for Saudi Pro League star Ruben Neves, with the Magpies seeking midfield reinforcements after Sandro Tonali's 10-month ban. Newcastle United are reportedly planning to sign a midfielder on loan in January as a result of Sandro Tonali's ban from football. Tone Ali has been banned for 10 months after illegal betting on games following an investigation by the Italian football authorities. Eddie Howe recently suggested that the Italy international could be available for Newcastle's game against Wolves on Saturday, but his suspension has since been ratified by FIFA. The manager is keen to bring in a new midfielder in January to provide cover for Tonali, and according to Football Insider, Newcastle want to sign someone on loan until the end of the season as they don't want to spend big on a permanent replacement. Everton centre mid Amadou Onana has been linked with a big money move to Tessa James Park recently, as well as Manut's Scott McTominay. It now seems, however, that both of those options are off the table. The Magpies have players such as Bruno Guimaraes, Sean Longstaff, Joe Linton, Joe Willock, and Elliot Anderson to provide cover for Tonali for now, but it's clear that Howe is keen to bring in a new midfielder temporarily. Newcastle identify two key midfield targets. In terms of potential additions, Newcastle have identified two players they could bring in on loan in January. One of those players is Manchester City star Calvin Phillips. As recently revealed by Team Talk, there have already been conversations between the Magpies and Phillips representatives over a switch to the North East club. It's thought that Man City would be happy to send the England international out on loan until the end of the season, as he wants more playing time ahead of the 2024 Euros. Howe is an admirer of Phillips, and it seems likely Newcastle will make a concrete approach for him in January. Another potential loan option is Al Hilal star Ruben Neves. The Portugal international ditched Wolds for the Saudi club in the summer window. Al Hilal are backed by the Saudi Public Investment Fund, who also own Newcastle, which could make a deal much easier to thrash out. Neves has plenty of experience in the Premier League. He spent six years at Molyneux and captained Wolves for his final season at the club. He has also expressed in the past that playing in the Champions League is one of his main goals for his career, so Nams would likely be open to joining Newcastle if they can agree a deal with Al Hilal. Spaniard ready to join Real Madrid instead of Liverpool. Real Madrid and Liverpool have been involved in some memorable contests in recent years, including a couple of UEFA Champions League finals. Los Blancos came out on top on both of those occasions. And now it looks like both clubs are after the signature of the same manager as well. Carlo Ancelotti has done a very good job since returning to Real Madrid for a second stint. In fact, he does not get enough credit for what he has achieved over his time at Santiago Bernabeu, especially when you consider the hand he has dealt, with very little depth and a somewhat inexperienced squad. Ancelotti is expected to leave at the end of this season when his current deal comes to an end, as it looks like he will join the Brazil national team. Thus, Real Madrid could find themselves in need of a new manager soon. As reported by Defensa Central, via the hard tackle, Xabi Alonso is a target for both Liverpool and Real Madrid. However, the Spaniard is prepared to join Los Blancos instead of the Reds. That is great news for Real Madrid. Even though he does not have a ton of experience, Alonso could be a great pick to be the club's next manager. He has done a remarkable job since joining Bayer Leverkusen in the middle of last season. At that point, it had looked like the club would have a tough time avoiding relegation. Instead, they ended up finishing sixth with the Spaniard at the helm. This season, they seem to have taken another step forward and sit top of the Bundesliga table. Thus, it is not hard to understand why some of Europe's biggest clubs are interested in Alonso. Let's see where he ultimately ends up though. Tony Cruz named the best football player in history. Real Madrid midfielder Tony Cruz spoke with reporters about who he considers the best football player in history. Quite expectedly, the German national team player named the Portuguese Cristiano Ronaldo. The player spent many years together, and during the Ronaldo era, the club rewrote history. Playing alongside Cristiano Ronaldo was incredible. He is the best footballer in history, Cruz said, as quoted by Madrid Universal. Let us remind you that Ronaldo is now playing in Saudi Arabia for the vengeful Al Nasser.
This season, he has scored 11 goals and provided six assists in 11 games across all competitions. After nine rounds in the Saudi Arabian Championship, Al Nasser is in third place with 19 points. Ronaldo joined Al Nasser in January 2023. His agreement with the Arab club runs until 2025. Romelu Lukaku returns to Inter, football's most infamous mercenary set to feel the wrath of San Siro. The Belgian looked set to rejoin the Nerazzurri on a permanent transfer during the summer, but was secretly trying to secure a move to Juventus Jose Mourinho has been added again this week. In between expressing his astonishment at being sent off for mocking Monza's coach last Sunday, he has been feigning surprise at the furor surrounding Romelu Lukaku's imminent return to San Siro. I didn't think Lukaku was so important in Milan, the Roma coach told reporters on Wednesday. What Romelu did in Milan, winning a Spudetto and some cups, has been done by 200 players in the history of Inter. So it's interesting. Lukaku, moving from Inter to Roma to help his coach, Mourinho, is a drama. But Hacken, Cal Blue from AC Milan to Inter is a marvel. And Fabio, Canavero from Inter to Juventus or Christian Vieri from Inter to Milan, no problem. Mourinho has already tried to make light of the situation, arguing back in September on DAZN that Inter have no reason to be angry with Lukaku because they already have an extraordinary team with many attackers. They should be happy for their former coach, who really needed Romelu. However, Inter fans don't love Mourinho that much. Their enduring affection for the charismatic manager that led them to a historic tremble in 2010 won't in any way, shape or form take the edge off what is expected to be a vitriolic expression of hatred for a player that broke their hearts not once, but twice. Indeed, Inter Ultras have been waiting for this game ever since the fixture list for the 2023-24 campaign came out. October 29 is a date we should circle in the calendar so we can be ready to let him hear all our disgust that we feel towards someone who turned his back on us in the most shameful way," the Curva Nord group said in a statement. A character who proved himself to be a small man because before being a champion, you must be a man and know how to keep your word. We defended you with swords drawn, and you repaid us by turning your back. Before the game against Roma, the Curva Nord will hand out 50,000 whistles to be used at every touch of the ball from he who betrayed our jersey. Let us all show how someone who proved himself unworthy to wear this shirt ought to be treated. Manchester United 0-3 Manchester City One-sided derby demonstrates gulf between clubs. The sight of Manchester United's players offering futile thanks to thousands of empty red seats was an image that defined the painful embarrassment they suffered at the hands of Manchester City. If last season offered genuine hope, United were making forward strides under the management of Eric Ten Hag, with the Carabao Cup bringing their first trophy since 2017 along with a return to the Champions League, then this campaign is starting to resemble a dismal and rapid retreat. United and their fans never enjoy defeat by Manchester City, but when it is inflicted with the ease of their rivals' 3-0 win at Old Trafford, it increases the hurt while bringing the gulf between these two rivals into even sharper relief. When Phil Foden tapped in City's third 10 minutes from time, Erling Haaland the provider after scoring the first two goals, the rush for the exits demonstrated that United's fans had seen enough. Those who remained at least had the consolation of probably beating the worst of the traffic. Old Trafford was sparsely populated when referee Paul Tierney sounded his final whistle, apart from the noise from joyous City fans in one corner revealing and heaping scorn on Ten Hag and his players. Ten Hag and Harry Maguire were in conversation with Tierney when United's grim spectacle concluded, presumably about City's first half penalty award after Rasmus Hodgland fouled Rodri. But if they were complaining those gripes rang deafeningly hollow after what Old Trafford witnessed.